You know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for somebody, anybody that can look at something that they've built from the ground up, whether that's a Rust server or a plugin or a Discord bot or even a child and say, you know what, I can do so much better. Let me go back in and try this again. If you've been with me for any length of time, you know my affection for Skinner, the plugin from Codefling.com by Whispers88. It literally has done everything that I ever wanted to do as far as skinning goes, and it did it incredibly efficiently. But Whispers looked at version 1 and said, okay, the community is asking me for this, this, and this. Can I do this? Probably. But even more importantly, can I do this and still make the plugin more performant than it was before? And after an extensive amount of testing, I think he's done it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plugin reviews and tutorials, plus I want to give you all of the little tips and tricks that are going to help you be more successful. Of course, if you're brand new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And by the end of this video, if you feel like I've earned it, don't forget to hit that thumbs up for me. If you head on over to codefling.com and search for Skinner, or you just click in the link in the video description down below, this is not the page that you're going to see. By the time this video releases, Whispers will have released V2 and all of this information is going to be different. But one important detail that I want to bring your attention to is going to be the price. So historically, we've paid 38 US dollars for Skinner V1. However, in an attempt to put this plugin in more hands, Whispers has actually reduced the price to $24.99. So hopefully by the time you see this video, the dock page will reflect the new price as well as giving you access to V2. So what is Skinner version 2.0 all about? Let's hop in game and start playing around. I'm going to show you all of the different details. So if you've watched any of my previous videos on Skinner V1, you're going to notice a little bit of overlap, but I will be going all of the features that are currently available for V2. So first and foremost, the plugin is obviously going to act like most of the skinning plugins that you've ever used in the past. There's a simple command that you can use in chat that's going to bring up a box that allows you to skin whatever items are in your inventory. But this immediately brings us to the first difference between V1 and V2. So you'll notice that when I put this fireplace into the skin box so that I can select a new skin for it, you're going to notice some a little bit different happen. So typically in the past, when you put an item from your inventory into the skin box, it leaves your inventory and goes into the skin box. However, in version two, it no longer does that but it still gives you the capability of selecting a new skin. But what this is essentially doing for us is giving us a live, real-time skinning of the items in our inventory, and I'll show you why that's important in just one second. So of course, we can select a new skin, and it changes in our inventory. Let's do the fridge, same thing. We can select a new skin, stays in our inventory, but we can select a new skin, and it changes in our inventory. But the reason why I find this so cool is because when we're actually skinning what we're wearing, when you change the skin in the skin box, you actually see it change on your player character as well. So you can actually have a look at things in real time, letting you know if this is the skin that you want to go with. And you can go absolutely ham on this and change to whatever skin you want to go with until you find the right one for you. Now, I'm also going to bring your attention to something else that's happening on the top row of your skin box. Those six slots are actually being saved by the plugin as your most frequently used skins. So regardless of which page we go to, and you can't see it on my screen right now, but there's an arrow key at the bottom of the screen here, kind of right behind my head, that allows you to change the pages. And we can keep scrolling forward and forward, but those top six skins don't change. That's that's because the plugin is keeping your history of your top used most skins. So if you're doing a whole bunch of loadouts or kits or whatever, then obviously that information is safe for you right there, easily accessible. So right there, we're already seeing some huge changes to the Skinner plugin, and it already has some huge advantages. But just wait, there's more. Another frequently used command in V1 and V2 is going to be slash skin craft. So when we open up our skin craft, you're going to notice a couple of different things. Obviously, we have all of the available skinnable items in the game and we can select which skin we want to go forward with. So at the basis of this feature, any item that we craft is automatically going to end up in our inventory with whatever skin we select here. And we can set up different profiles here too, or skin sets in this case. So if I change over to skin set two, you're going to see all of my skins change. And if I go to skin three, of course, you're going to see another set. In my case, most of them are still at default. And while just that functionality by itself is incredibly helpful, there's a couple more different ways that we can actually use the skins that we've selected in our different skin sets. So you'll notice here what I've done here is I've kind of made it so that my skin set number one is kind of a lighter colored and if I go to skin set number two of course you would naturally think that these items are going to be darker in color so what we can do with this is we can actually change on the fly 
all of our skins in our inventory, on our player character, and the base, and whatever deployables are inside that base, all based off of what we've done inside of SkinCraft. So as you can see here, my player character has a fairly dark kit set on. I can go in chat and I can do slash SS1, which will change my skin set to profile number one. And then I can use a command called skin inventory. Chat responds with all items have been skinned. And if we go look at my inventory, you can see now that my player character has all of the items that were skinned in profile set number one. If I change my skin set to number two and do the same thing again, you'll see I'm back to the darker skin set that I selected in set number two. And that in itself is really cool for skinning on the fly, but it goes even further than that. So let me go back and change back to skin set number one. I can also use a command called skin base. And as you can see there, it just changed everything in my base to the skins that I have selected on skin set number one. If I change to skin set number two, and do that same command again, you can see that it changes everything back to skin set number two, just like that. But wait, there's even more still. So let's say you have a team on your server and you want all of your team members to be running around in the same kit set, maybe so that everyone recognizes who they are, or maybe so that you can easily identify who's on your team from a distance, whatever the reason is, you can do that too. So if you have looked there, Whispers is having a little nap down on the floor there. And if I change to my skin set number one, which if you remember is the lighter color, I can use a command called skin team. And as you can see there, he actually changed in real time, even though he's sleeping, not online, he changed, my player character changed back to the lighter skins. And so would have anybody else that is actually a member of my team on this server. So I set up this example as a day mode and a night mode. So obviously the darker skin set that I have is more useful at night. So with one simple command, I can change all of my team members, let's say they're heading out for a major battle and it's nighttime, I can put them all in darker skin sets. Or if you're typically building your base within a specific biome, whether that's snow, arid, or desert, whatever it happens to be, you could set up a skin profile or a skin set with colors that match for whatever biome it is that you're actually building in. The functionality of this plugin is absolutely incredible. So let's say you wanted to skin all of the items that were in a specific container. So if we have a look at this storage box right here, you can see that I took my kit off and put it inside this box. So that was my lighter colored skin set. So let's change it to my darker one, which was skin set number two. And then we can use a command called skin con or skin container. And then if we go have a look, you can see obviously all of the items that were in that box, the specific box that we were looking at are changed to whatever skins I had selected on skin set number two. So let's say we have a specific item or a deployable, something in our base that we want to change the skin of for whatever reason, but we don't want to actually change our skin set. Of course, we can go up to that item and we can do in chat skin item. That's going to bring up the skin box for that specific item that you're looking at, and you can change it to whatever you want in real time. So now that one box by itself has changed the skin everything else stays the same and as if that wasn't already enough don't worry there's more there's now a new feature built into skinner that is called skin auto so if we toggle on skin auto any item that ends up in my inventory is going to be automatically skinned as it's landing in my inventory based on whichever skin set I have selected. So just to show you that as an example, I have nothing in my inventory and I have nothing on my player character. If I bring up my kits menu, you can see this kit in the top right hand corner there that's got all of these skinned items on there. And I'm actually gonna claim this kit here in just one second. But I wanted to show you and make sure that you recognize that all of these items have different skins on them than what they're gonna be when they land in my inventory. So I'm just gonna click on claim. And as you can see, all of those items landed on my player character or in my inventory. In this case, it landed in my backpack, but they landed on me with the skins that I had selected in skin set number two. If I change back to skin set number one, do the same thing again. Obviously it lands on my player character in the skin that I selected in skin set number one. All right, so, so far I've already sold you on this plugin. By far, this is the most useful or most encompassing skinning plugin that I've ever come across. But guess what? There's more. Let's say there's a specific skin out there somewhere that you want to use in Skinner, but it's not currently available. Well, of course you can import skins directly into the plugin with a simple command. So if we do slash skin import with the skin ID of the item that we actually want to add to our library, hit enter, it says that that skin has now been added to your library. But as some of you might already know, some skin developers out there will actually build an entire collection of skins for a whole bunch of different items. Well, we of course can import that entire collection in the same manner. So if we do slash C-O-L import, all one word, 
with the collection ID number from the workshop or wherever it is that you happen to get it from. And then it reports back saying that that skin collection has been added to the library. So if we go into our skin craft menu, you can see that the collection that I just added is this neon collection available from the workshop. But let's say that you're not directly available to take that request from one of your players. So what if there was a functionality built into the plugin where your players can actually directly request these plugins and it gets saved in a bit of a library so that you can later approve or deny whatever those requests are. And obviously, why would I bring that functionality up if it wasn't already there? So let's add a skin request here. So we'll do slash skin request, all one word, and then we're gonna add the collection ID number of whatever it is, or the skin ID number, it doesn't have to be a collection, and then hit enter. It then says skin blah 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 has been requested. So no, that doesn't mean that it's readily available and this player can now use it. This has to go through an approval process. And of course, anybody that has the permission that allows you to approve or deny different skins can do slash skin requests or slash SRS. And once we open that up, we can see all of the skins that have been added as requests and we can either try them, approve them or deny them. So if you wanna try one of the skins that are currently in the request list, of course, you can just drag it into your inventory, place it and try it and see if you want to accept it. If you do, obviously you would just change this to approve right here right click on it and now that skin is approved and of course available to be used for the rest of the players on the server. If there ends up to be a skin in there that you don't want everybody to be able to use, change this to deny and then of course just right click on whatever that item is that you want to deny and it will remove it from the request list and not add it to the skin or plugin. I should probably show you what the configuration file looks like because it is incredibly useful and it's important that you know how it works. Most of the configuration is just dealing with the different commands that are available for the different functionalities that Skinner V2 uses. And you of course can change these commands to whatever works best for your server or your community. You of course can change how the plugin functions in itself, including having a blacklist. If there's skins out there that you absolutely do not want to be brought into your server, you can add them to the blacklist and then no matter what, they can never be brought in. And then of course there's a cooldown section. So if you don't want people to be able to go in and actually change things one right after the other, you of course can set up different cooldowns for the different commands that are available. And then at the end of the configuration file, as you start approving different requested skins for your server, you're gonna start seeing that information land on your configuration file. That's it, super simple. The most that you're gonna make use of in here though is being able to change which commands trigger which functionality. So of course, a lot of these functionalities are all controlled using permissions, and it's incredibly important that you have a look at your permissions and get them set up correctly. For example, not everybody on your server should be able to access the SRS list or the skin request list. And certainly maybe there's not even admins or moderators that we want to be able to try the item. So of course you could set up your permissions so that all of your admins or moderators were able to see what was on the list and either approve or deny it, but not have the ability to try it. You can see where this is important. And another protection that's actually built into Skinner version 2.0 is in regards to the team Team skinning that we talked about earlier. Let's say you have that one team member that absolutely does not want to be a part of this whole skinning fiasco that's going on. They can of course opt out so that if that command is ran on the team, it won't actually affect their loadout. If it were me and I were the team captain, I don't think I'd want that player on my team because I mean, come on, be part of the team. But Whispers was thoughtful enough to put that functionality in there so that if you do have that one team member that doesn't wanna be a part of this, they can opt out, simple command. So we're gonna get into the permissions and I'm gonna show you what they all look like, but there's one more really important thing that I wanna show you in regards to Skinner version 2.0. So let's just quickly go in and have a look at the different permissions that are available for Skinner. So we can control what our players can and can't do. So you can see in a VIP environment how this might be beneficial. So let's say you wanted all of the players on your server to be able to use the skin box functionality of Skinner version 2.0, but not be able to skin a container or skin their inventory or skin their teams or whatever, you have that functionality that can all be controlled with permission. So you could set it up so that only VIPs could skin their entire base or all of the items within their base. If you only wanted a specific group of players on your server to be able to submit requests, you would obviously only grant this one permission to that group directly. And like I was saying earlier, when we're talking about skin requests, if you don't want somebody to be able to try the skin that's being submitted, from your player base, then you would make sure that they don't have this perm skin try permission granted to them. 
That way they can't actually try the skin, but they can still approve or deny it. So obviously by the time this video is released, all of the documentation is going to be reflective of all of the different permissions that are available and what they do. But before I let you go, there is one more thing that I wanted to show you. And this is really just to show you the performance of the Skinner V2 plugin. I'm not necessarily showing off the tool that I'm using to show you that performance. That'll be in an upcoming video in the very near future. So I'm just going to open up what's called the profiler inside of Carbon and I'm going to click on the record button. Again, don't worry about any of this. I'm going to get to all of this in an upcoming video. So I have my profiler recording right now. So let's just pull up Skinbox for right now. And I'm just going to throw this door in there because I had it on my inventory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just go through here and I'm just going to spam all of these different skins on here. And as you can see, it is currently changing in my inventory and you would think that this is just overloading the server and if a whole bunch of players had this ability that it would simply crash the server. However, you're gonna see in just one second here, when I pull up my profiler and turn off the recording, you're gonna see how much of an effect that actually had on my server. So if we have a look here inside my profile, you can see the Skinner is actually performing better than the eight plugins above it, even though Skinner was the only one that was actually being used at that time. So to break that down for you, Skinner doing all of that function that I was just doing when I was spamming all over that inventory, Skinner used up three milliseconds for that 49 seconds that I was profiling for, three milliseconds of resources on my server. So even if you just compared Skinner V2 to Skinner V1, that is hundreds of times more performant than anything you would probably ever see. I'm obviously not going to do a direct comparison, but I certainly could and Whispers definitely has. And I'm going to do just one more test here. I'm actually going to skin my base using one of my skin sets with the profiler running. So it changed all of the items in my base. I'm going to shut down the profiler. And as you can see there, it skinned all of the deployable items in my base and still only used two milliseconds. It happened so fast, the server barely even noticed that it was there. The players definitely wouldn't notice it. This plugin is primo when it comes to performance. I've had a lot of conversations with Whispers during the development and the beta testing and all of that stuff. And one of his most important goals was to give this plugin as much functionality as he possibly could and still keep it ultimately performant. I think he hit it out of the park. Let me know what you all think in the comment section down below though. All right, I've just listed off probably eight or nine incredibly useful features of Skinner version two. If I haven't convinced you to head on over to CodeFling and pick up your copy today, I'll never be able to. This plugin is absolutely top notch. You will not regret it. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Skinner V2. I'm super excited to see how much the community responds and hopefully falls in love with this new plugin. If you want to check out my previous video on the Skinner plugin, you can check out one of these videos over here. Of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, click down over here. And if you want to support what I'm doing at Rust Admin Academy, which is hugely appreciated, you can click on my Patreon link just down below. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next week.